Good morning, I'm Jack Thurston. With Vermont's town meeting day just over a week away, we have a preview of what to expect from Secretary of State Sarah Copeland Hansis. She says in years where there's a presidential primary, as there of course is in 2024, there tends to be extra interest in voter participation. And that comes with a reminder. You will have to specify which presidential ballot you want when you go into your polling place. So when we conduct the presidential primary, this is the presidential preference voting time. It happens in all of the states and territories of the United States. And it operates under a different set of rules because this operates under the federal rules. Um, our statewide primary, uh, we conduct under our own state rules and we have a little more flexibility with that. So because Vermont doesn't have a, a, a party registration system. People don't have to declare, I am a Democrat, therefore I'm always in the Democratic Party, or I am a Republican, or I am a progressive. Um, Vermont has always rejected the idea that we should make people declare a party. Um, but for the federal rules, people do need to declare which ballot they want to vote. So when you show up to vote on March 5th, or if you request your ballot ahead of time, uh, you will be asked whether you want to vote in the Democratic ballot or whether you want to vote on the Republican ballot. And you will only be able to take one of those into the voting booth with you. Um, and that, that information will be recorded. It doesn't mean that you're a Republican or a Democrat just because that's what you vote on, uh, on a particular presidential primary. It just means that's where you saw, you saw the need to express your preference in that primary. And if you live in a community that votes by Australian ballot, your municipal vote will be on a different ballot than the presidential primary that ballot. That is correct. Yes. If you've already gone to the My Voter page and requested your ballot and you have it in hand, now is the time to get that back to your town or city clerk. Um, most communities have a, a ballot drop box or a drop slot on the, the town clerk's office. You can use that to return your ballot. Uh, if you get it in the mail really quickly, uh, you know, it might get back into uh, your town clerk's office. But just to be safe, you can also drop it off during their normal hours. I asked if the presidential primary drives interest in town meeting day. This year, school budget votes across the state are a very contentious issue. Are you expecting that that will also be a major factor driving voter interest this year? Well, it is definitely um, driving interest. I think what's interesting, though, is because of the flexibilities that the legislature is considering right now to allow communities to delay their school budget vote uh, in order to do a recalculation of that pupil waiting, um, some communities may not actually have your one stop everything on the same day. Some communities might actually have a school budget vote that is, uh, that is weeks or, uh, or a month out. The city of Barrie is one of those examples. Yes. yes. And so with that said, people should probably check with their local clerk, yes. whether they're you know a city or a town, yep. and just and ask exactly. And clerks are glad to get those calls. Exactly. Yes, clerks are used to answering those questions all the time. Um, and I think what's helpful for people to also remember is that the school board who put together that budget that's being presented to you, whether it's on March 5th or sometime later, um, they also are willing to answer questions. Your school board are elected officials who work for you. So if you have a question about something that's on the school budget or when is the school budget vote and you happen to run into one of your school board members, you should definitely ask them. Same with the select board or the city council, right? Those are people who worked hard to put together the budget that's going before voters this annual meeting and you can reach out to them for information and details as well. I hate to say this, but it's true. In my experience, voters have told me when I've covered cities and towns across Vermont that town meeting day is maybe the one voting day that they're gonna skip. Mm. They mm. are much more likely, I've been told over the years, to participate in November elections. Yeah. That's a mistake. <laughs> you want to see voters participate in any election. Absolutely, and, and there's nothing that more directly affects your household and your budget than these questions that are coming up about how we fund our 
town services and how we fund our schools because these we are paying for through our property taxes. Um, if you, even if you're renting, likely your rent is fluctuating based on the landlord's need to cover the property taxes. And so these are questions that really do very closely impact you. And we think Vermonters should get out there and participate in this. Even if it's that slightly less convenient, you know, all day in person town meeting, those are really valuable to uh, to be able to see what's being presented, to hear the the, uh, the the select board present why they're doing what they're doing, um, and then to be able to debate those issues with your neighbors, hear why one neighbor supports and another neighbor doesn't. I've had my mind changed before participating in town meeting. I went in thinking I was definitely going to vote yes, and then I heard the debate and heard uh, you know the pros and cons and the way different people articulated uh, how they felt, and I changed my mind. Um, and that's one of the magical things about participating at the local level um, for those traditional town meeting communities. Of course, a growing list of communities are moving away from those traditional town meetings. They're going to a to a Australian type of ballot in their yeah. communities. But reflect for me on the old-fashioned kind of town meeting. What do you hear from your uh, Secretary of State colleagues from around the country about maybe how special mm. our tradition yeah. is here? Yeah. Um, weighing, of course, the challenges of uh, some people not being able to get the day off to participate. Um, uh, you know, the idea that that we have this direct democracy, where you're not just coming in and getting a, a, a binary yes/no option as you would if you were filling out a ballot, but you actually have the ability to amend one of the articles. Let's say you think that um, you think that you're school board or select board didn't raise enough money to do a certain thing that your community thinks is important. You have the ability to amend those questions in a traditional town meeting. And that's a way that people can, can really directly impact how their local community is addressing their needs. It's special. It is. Tell me about the My Voter page. What information can people get from that page that may help them prepare for town meeting day? So we're probably past the moment where people could go on and and request a ballot be mailed to them because with mail delays now, uh, it, your ballot might not arrive on time. But if you had thought of this weeks ago, or if you want to look forward to the August um, primary, you can go onto your My Voter page. You can request your um, your ballot be mailed to you. You can update your mailing address and your voter registration. Uh, you can go into the My Voter page and create your profile for the first time and register to vote. Um, you know, it's really uh, a way that people can access all the information that they need to be able to vote. You can find your polling place, for instance. So I, I really want to also forecast that for the November election, we are going to start creating a voter guide, which you'll be able to access through your My Voter page. So that when you get your November ballot in the mail, because remember, we automatically mail November ballots. You'll be able to see all of the candidates and issues on your ballot, and then you'll be able to take a look at your My Voter page uh, voter guide to see statements from the candidates and all of that. So the My Voter page is something that I really encourage everybody to check out because it, it's, a, it's a powerful way to stay connected. If you do use vote by mail and you want to check to see if your clerk has received the ballot that you mailed back, you can also go to your My Voter page and the clerks will be updating that as they're receiving ballots uh, in the coming days. You referenced voter registration as one thing you can do on that page. You can also do that in person on town meeting day. Vermont is special in that we can yes. register to vote right up to and including on election days here. Yeah. So, so People can participate on town meeting day. Everyone yes. mm -hmm. can if they're of yep. the appropriate age. Oftentimes, the clerk will have a separate table set up for people who have not yet registered. Um, and, and this same day voter registration is something that is available to all Vermonters. And we encourage you to use that because oftentimes we don't have an excuse to go into the town clerk's office until that time of voting. And so use. Use Election Day as a perfect opportunity to register to vote. Your final pitch to voters, why should they participate in Town Meeting Day? Well, these are the uh, places where decisions are made that directly impact your quality of life in your community and the 
the quality of your schools that are educating the youth in your community. And so I, I can see no better way to, uh, to make your, your voice known and to impact your own uh, home and community than to participate in uh, your local elections.